Hey guys, we're going to put the exhaust back on the Honda CX500. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So I intended to come out here and do a video, uh, really a first start video, on the Honda CX500. I have up to this point uh, put in a new stator, I've put in a new regulator rectifier, and uh, you know, engine out, engine in, carbs out, carbs in. We cleaned up the carbs, we've reinstalled them. And I, I just I got ahead of myself and was excited to start this bike, but I realized, well, I got to throw the exhaust on, and, and I had to do some restoration work with the exhaust. And I thought, as I was doing all that, to me that was all just getting the bike started. But as I got into it, I realized, you know, this is actually a video how to rehang this exhaust. So. That's what we've got here is uh, how to put the exhaust system back onto the bike and uh, here we go. On chrome where you have rust, um, my favorite way is aluminum foil uh, and water. When you take a little water and aluminum foil, I forget the chemistry, you can look it up. but the aluminum reacts with the rust and converts it. But you do scratch the chrome, um, which then I polish with chrome polish afterward, but you only get so successful with that. So this is on the bottom side. I'm doing what I can. Not perfect, but an improvement. It does, where it's pitted through the chrome, it just turns it black. Okay, so one thing I've done off camera is to paint this collector, or crossover tube, whatever you want to call it. Um, just used VHT exhaust, you know, high temp black paint uh, primer first, but also I went over the whole thing before with uh, a wire brush like this on my drill and removed a lot of rust that way but then finished it off with uh, a rust treatment that converts the rust and uh, then did the priming and the painting. So what is rust removal and what is rust conversion? If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship. And how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on UrbanMonkTV.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. It's pretty much what you think. If I'm using sandpaper or a wire wheel or something like this to just scrape uh, or through some abrasion take rust off and get down to bare metal, 
then I'm doing rust removal. But there's uh, ways to convert rust from ferric oxide, which it is, it's like iron oxide, uh, and chemically convert it to something more inert that isn't corrosive. Um, you see earlier in this video when I'm using aluminum foil, the aluminum foil mixes with the water and so the aluminum atoms in the foil bond with the ferric oxide and there's a chemical reaction there and it converts it to aluminum oxide which is all the black stuff that's coming off when you do that and then I wipe it off with a rag. Uh, alternatively, if you use a rust treatment like this, same thing, you are chemically converting the um, ferric oxide into some other inert compound that isn't corrosive. Okay, so to mount this exhaust, I've got one side assembled and then the other side disassembled so I can put on one big piece and have fewer smaller pieces to add on. And so mounting this collector, you've got one bolt like this, I forget the size of it, it looks like a 8 millimeters, uh, 6 millimeter probably. And then two of these guys back here, these guys don't have a nut because the nut is welded in here on both sides and then on the front this just hooks up into I'm trying to look through the camera lens while I do this oh yeah sorry it's back here and it'll sit right in there so that whole collector is just back up under here the other thing I'm gonna need is a fresh exhaust gasket in here I've got these copper crush versions pretty common and typical some eBay seller is uh, sending them this way, but I don't care, as long as they fit. So, got one for each side. So, uh, another little tip here, these exhaust gaskets, uh, when you're trying to put exhaust in, you're juggling multiple points, and one thing you want is just this gasket to be in here and stay in there, but of course it doesn't want to stay in there because of gravity, and you can't mount it on this end because it, uh, you can't see that, but it, you know, there's nothing to hold it there. So here's my little tip. I just dip it in grease and get the thing sticky. And the grease will just hold it in there. And then on first start, um, it just burns off. But it's one last thing you gotta hold on to while you're doing the process. And so, uh, what I'm gonna try to do is lift up this whole assembly, hook this up in the front there, and then get these bolts, at least one or two of them, in underneath on this collector and uh, should be hanging there. So these back two seem to want to fit in first with a little finessing. There we go. Okay, then the front one. Okay, let me show you. So that collector is now down there. The rear brake lever goes underneath, or the collector goes over it, however you want to look at that. And then underneath we have these two bolts, one, two, and then this guy up front goes through there with a nut on the other side. So I'll tighten all those up. They're uh, 12 millimeter.
Okay, that's one hanging exhaust. Let me bring up. Oh, dang it. Careful of this. You want to make sure this collar is up in front of the engine before. I got to redo this. Okay, so if you get caught with the same mistake I made, um, best to have this collector up here before you put the thing up. But if you do what I did, you can just loosen up the front longer bolt up here underneath and then you pivot the whole thing down like this and it's just enough to get it by there then put that bolt back in there and now it's up where it needs to be Just enough to get the nuts started. These are 10 millimeter, um, it's a 10 millimeter hit, uh, socket or wrench. And yeah, that'll fit. This is kind of a feel thing. There might be a torque for this. I'm gonna need a different uh, wrench here. All right, this is gonna work better, although I, I tend to like a wrench. Um, in fact, what I might do, this is not too big to me. I have too much leverage here, and I can't get a really good feel for the crush I'm doing on that gasket. So what I'm switching to, one, a deep well, because that uh, bolt is going to come out a ways here, and maybe I'll bottom out. But I'm going to go to a quarter-inch ratchet where um, I can feel, you know, I just have less leverage. And my feel for this will be better. I'm also looking at the movement here into the head and trying to see, and I need an extension. So this is a good uh, thing to cover. Does putting an extension on here increase my torque and thus affect my feel? No, it doesn't because all I've done, I, you know, my lever is still this long. That's that's the mechanical advantage of, of this. The length of an extension does not make a difference. So how much torque, you know? It's not a ton. See, I can see that I don't have movement going anymore and that the amount of resistance in the feel is going up, so that's about it. So on this side, I've got that copper crush gasket or crush washer, however you want to think of it, in there with the grease already being held. So at this point, some of you may have picked up on the fact that when I took the exhaust system off the bike, on this side, I left the header pipe and the muffler connected to the collector. But on this side, I did not. And you may ask, why did you only do the one side? Here's why. On the front and on the rear of this collector, there are gaskets, essentially, exhaust gaskets. And they're not easy to put in and get off. Uh, you know, getting them apart is easier than putting them together, I say. so. Um, I'm going to do this, but I only want to do it on one side. And you can't get the exhaust system off the bike without taking at least one side off, but only one side is necessary. So to get this in, I'm going to try to just knock it in with a dead blow hammer. They're really a tight fit. Because again, it's a tight fit. And then a block of wood. I'm trying to go in as evenly as I can, but you don't want to uh, deform it. And it easily does. It's a little 
ugly going in. You'll lose some pieces of material. It's not a big deal. And I'm going to see if I can just countersink it just slightly. So I just found a large socket that's about the right diameter. So it's in. And then, with that in place, just kind of get it started. Make sure this is up to the top. And then just start working it in. It's hard. There we go. Sorry, I blocked the view there. Okay. So now what I'm trying to do is get this whole header pipe back into the collector far enough to where I can get my nuts started on these bolts and it's not easy. And the problem is, is there's no way to hammer on this thing. Now I guess what I could do. pull it out again and drive that exhaust gasket even deeper because I think at this point that's what's holding me up. There. Let me see if that gets me there. Yeah, that was it. I wish I could say there was an easy way, but there really isn't. Except working up a little sweat. Okay, I've got some threads started there. Make sure you've got a good solid bite on a couple of threads here before you start putting torque to it because uh, you don't want to just strip the threads off. So I'm going to be going, not only am I going to be turning, but I'm going to be pushing just to make sure that I am not stressing, because I've only got a couple of threads in contact there, if, if you understand what I'm saying. And, um, that's a lot of force in only a couple threads, so I'm going to try to force the other way as I tighten this on. Okay, seems okay. I definitely have a bite on it. And so as I get further on, I don't have to put quite as much force into the nuts. I mean, now I can see that I'm, I got a good bite. And then just tighten this clamp down here. Okay, so with this one, I'll be honest with you guys, I, I started it with the, with the gasket fully inserted in there and there was absolutely no way, let me get this out of the way. There was no way that this was going to go in. Um, and so I've got the gasket kind of partially out. Of course, it's gotten uh, a bit beat up in the process, but I've got a decent seal around it. And so what I'm doing now is just hammering it in the rest of the way. But I am going to have uh, some of that gasket's going to remain outside. There's just too much gasket material there, frankly. Anywho, so now I'm just taking a wood block on the back end and that dead blow hammer and uh, and I believe 
it goes like this, yeah. So, in hindsight, mount this bracket first onto your muffler because it's pretty hard to get the, uh, the nut in here. I'm going to be able to do it, but... But now I'm forced to use a open-end wrench to tighten it because there's no clearance for anything else. All right. Let me tighten that up, and then obviously I need to drive this in further until these line up. All right, let's see if I can get it far enough in. So, dead blow hammer is helpful because when you, there's no rebound on these. When you hit it, all the force goes into what you're hitting without any force uh, in rebound. And, you know, you drummers out there will understand that as far as the rebound of the stick off a drum. Yeah, you'll go. You will go. It's so close. There we go. Okay. One hung muffler and a rear passenger foot peg. So what's left here, I'm just gonna cut away. But I know I've got enough in there to seal it well. Ugh. All right, well, so this thing's a real bear. Um, I probably have 50% of the original gasket in there could not get the whole thing in. There just isn't clearance for it. So, you know, maybe somebody out there is uh, much more adept than I am, but it's sealed, it's on, uh, all the bolts are in. I'm gonna tighten up these nuts. And if I had the right size socket. So, I guess kind of back to the point I was making earlier, which is if you don't have to take these exhaust parts apart, don't, because they're a bear to put back together. That's why I only took half off. And then again on the hanger bracket, um, it bends this way, so this goes on the outside, so that tab is here for the foot peg, and then it reaches in to the bolts behind like that. impact driver only because uh, it has the right size bit to really fit these screws. All right, we got an exhaust system. Okay, so every journey is a little unique. Um, that's putting the exhaust system on the CX-500 when you only took one half of the muffler and header pipe off uh, frankly, it's my recommendation to do so if you can. If you have to take all one, two, three, four, five parts apart, uh, go for it. But if you don't have to, 
don't bother. And one, you're going to save money on gaskets, and two, they're a pain. Um, so I hope that's helpful. That's the exhaust system. The next thing we're going to tackle on this thing is going to be uh, putting gas in it and trying to start it up on the bench here. Hey, if you like motorcycles, check out my book, Creating Mr. Corton. Uh, a lot of CX500 fun in here, even though Mr. Corton is based on a GS550 Cafe Racer build. Um, lots of fun about the CX500 and my history with it. Hey, uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to become an urban monk. Thanks for watching. Thank you.